Hello, church. I hope that your week is off to a good start. I know we're dealing with still some crazy stuff that we've been dealing with for months, and that's actually what I want to talk about. Not necessarily any of the specific situations, but the big picture for you and me as brothers and sisters in Christ. Hebrews chapter 11 is probably for you, I know it is for me, a great inspiration in times like this. It is a chapter that we call the Faith Hall of Fame, and there are all these people, brothers and sisters in the faith, who Old Testament people, who faced all kinds of challenges. And the writer of Hebrews actually gets in verse 32 to a point where he says, I I don't even have time to list them all. And the, the stories are too good. Isn't that a great problem, by the way, that in the kingdom of God, there are too many men and women of faith who have stood on their faith and stood up by up for people and stood with God that we don't even have time to talk about them all. I think that's I think that's a good problem. Verse 32, and what more shall I say? I don't have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground, and they were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Now that sounds terrible until you read the next verse. God had planned something better for us, that only together with us would they be made perfect. These men and women of faith who never in their life here on earth received fully their promise, which is eternal life with God. And and what we talk about when we talk about the promises of heaven or the new heavens and the new earth, they all lived by their faith. They lived in a way that uh, they were conquerors and heroes, but they also lived in a way that many of them were martyrs, giving their lives for their faith. And the writer says, and they never received fully all that they were promised because God had something better planned. We trust greatly in the promises of God and we trust in the promises of an eternal life in a time where there will be no COVID-19, where there will be no racial strife because we will all be one in Christ Jesus. Now, there's two, two things about that that I want to say really quickly. One is we look sometimes so much forward to that time that we forget that these people made our world better in real time. That part of what makes them our heroes is not that they held on to a hope until they died, but that they lived out the reality of that hope until they died. They are heroes because they made this world better. What God has called you and me to is the same. He has called us not just to make the waiting room full and to be sitting there twiddling our thumbs until we get the call to go home. He has called us to make this world right now better that the kingdom of God would break out in the way that you and I live. And that comes out in love. It comes out in compassion. It comes out in service. It comes out in the way that we check on each other during this time when we're separated still to an extent. It means that we make sure that we live responsibly for the people around us because it's not just about us. It means that we pray continually that there will be peace in a land that right now 
is filled with division. It means that we, as brothers and sisters in Christ, refuse to be a part of that division, but that we commit ourselves day in, day out to encouraging not only our friends, but even our enemies, of loving not just our family, but even those that would uh, completely dishonor our family. And I know that that sounds hard, but that's what we signed up for. When we went in the water and we said, Jesus, I want to be a kingdom of God person, we put to death the selfish person who said, I just want to be done. And God raised a person who said, how can I help? How can I help you see Jesus? How can I help you see love in the flesh? How can I be your servant? That's what he called us to. And these men and women in Hebrews chapter 11 are the people who put that into action in their lives. And we are called to live the same way. In Hebrews chapter 12, the, con- the discussion is still the same. And he says, therefore, because of all of those brothers and sisters in the faith, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and let me just stop and say and remind you, these are not witnesses to our life. They're not sitting there watch us, watching us race. That's not their job. That's not the kind of witnesses he's talking about. It doesn't mean that they're sitting there going, oh, wow, James did that well, or oh, wow, James really stunk at that. No, no, no. These are witnesses from of God to us. These are men and women of the faith declaring through their stories and declaring through this record, God will deliver you, and God will work through you, and God can deliver other people because you're faithful and you allow him to work through you. God keeps his promises. God gives strength. God gives mercy and compassion and kindness, even in your hardest moments, so that whatever you have to face, lions, fires, swords, martyrdom, and most of us are just complaining about a little extra apparel. He says, you can do this. You can get through this, but you can do better than that. You can help all those other people out there hurting right now too. You can get over yourself and get after the work of God because God is good and they bear witness to us. You really can overcome your biggest obstacle, which as he goes on to say, is our self and our selfishness. He says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of God. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. And instead of saying, how long, O Lord, how long, O Lord? Start praying, God, how can I help? How can I help my community? How can I get back on track? How can I get back on focus? And how can I make sure that this is not about me and my impatience, but about you and your glory and those people who still need to see it? God bless you. Pray for me and I'll pray for you and let's have a great week as we serve the Lord and serve his purpose.